Coding is all very well, but there's a time when we need to compile the code that we've produced and push the result out into the world. And that might start out simple to manage, but as your project grows, so does the complexity of pushing out your code. The more moving parts there are, the more there are opportunities for something somewhere to break. For example, at work, we use a PHP backend stack that integrates React apps. So pushing a new build into production includes up to seven or eight steps, including downloading translations, compiling the different apps, and pushing all that out to the CDN. If we forget any of these, it's a recipe for trouble. The nightmare situation is when you're trying to remember how to update a project you haven't worked on for three months or more. So what is the answer? On paper, the solution is simple automate everything that can be. And I've got good news for you. There is a powerful tool that allows you to automate a lot of things. It's called GitHub Actions, but it's daunting. And today we're going to look at how to use release it and auto change log to script your release process and how to set up Git Actions to automate that process. First, let's look at how to deploy our code. I'll be working on a simplified version. I'll be using an NPM module that I've created previously. Now there are five steps that I use every time I update my NPM package. First, I make sure my code is up to date with git pool. Then I ensure that the code is clean by running unit tests with jest and by linting with eslint. After that, I prepare a change log that lists all the changes that have occurred since the last version. Then I set a new version number. Finally, I publish the whole thing, both the, as a release to GitHub and as a package to NPM. I've come across a tool that covers all my publication needs and then some. It's an NPM module called Release It, and I use it pretty much in all my projects now. Let me show you how it works. First to set it up, we run NPM in it, release it. The tool asks us a few questions. It stores its configuration either in the package.json or in a separate file called releaseit.json. I personally prefer the second way because my package.json files already have quite a bit of info in them. Now, of the five steps I mentioned, one was tracking and updating the version number, and this already comes baked into the release it tool. So that's one step done and four to go. And also by default, release it will refuse to do anything if the Git repository is not in a clean state. For example, if there's any uncommitted work in progress. So that's already taken care of by default. The next thing is to make sure we're only releasing from the Git branch that is meant to be released. For that, we add a constraint in the configuration file, the release it.json, by specifying the required branch field. This is pretty self-explanatory. Only run if you're on the main branch. Now, while we're here, we can also specify the commit message that will be created when we release the package. We can include the version number that's being used. The next two steps are to make sure my code is up to date and to test it. I've already set up tests in my project using jests and eslint, and I run them using npm run test and npm run lint. I want these to run at the start before anything happens, so I use a release it lifecycle hook. There are quite a few. And so in my configuration file for release it, I have a list of three items in the before init hook. This is all fairly self-explanatory. We've defined a hook for release it that runs before it gets to work, and this updates the code with git pool, checks for linting errors with npm run lint and runs unit test with npm run test. A final thing I like to do is to add a change log that lists everything we've done between releases. But our commit messages should already state what we've done, so we can automate this too. And to do that, we'll be using a tool called auto change log. To trigger it, we're going to use another hook called after bump. As its name implies, it runs once the version number is bumped up. And when the hook is called, we call the auto change log tool. Here we're going to add a dash p flag to tell the tool that the package number is the one stored in the package.json. This is going to create a change log file using the commit data and create the release info. Finally, we specify we want to release to GitHub and publish to NPM by creating a GitHub and an NPM section and setting the release parameter to true in both of these. Now it's time to test everything out. If we look at your package.json file, the init step that we mentioned earlier should have added a release entry in the script section. This allows us to run npm run release to trigger the release process. When we do so, we get asked a series of questions. Do we want to define this as a minor upgrade, a major upgrade, or a breaking change? Do we want to publish? Do we want to push to npm? And so on. This allows us to run through the process and check what is going on. And once that's working the way we want it to, now's the time to automate this even more. For that, we're going to use GitHub Actions. Now, what are GitHub Actions and how do they work? Imagine you're in a company and a new developer joins your team. What do you do? The first step is that you buy him a new computer, then you help him download the code, install all the tools, and get to work. In a sense, 
GitHub Actions does exactly the same thing. It sets up a container with an operating system, then it downloads the software and a current version of our code, and finally it carries out a series of tasks. Let's set it up. To do this, we're going to create a folder called .github. In that folder, we create another folder called workflows. And in this folder, we create YAML files. Ours is going to be called release.yaml. Now, there are three required fields here, name, on, and jobs. These define what the workflow is called, when it is triggered, and what actions it takes. In our case, the workflow is going to be called release and publish to NPM, so we fill in the name field correspondingly. And it will be triggered manually, so we set the on field to workflow dispatch. Now for the fun part, the jobs field. This defines us a list of jobs that can be run, and each job is a list of steps. Our first and only job is gonna be called release. And now we're gonna configure it. We start by specifying which operating system we want to run using the runs on parameter. Here I've specified Ubuntu. Now we define the list of steps. We start simple here just to test things out. The first thing to do is retrieve the code and for that we're going to use a prepackaged action called actions slash checkout at v2. This one is created by GitHub and there are lots of available actions for loads of different use cases. In the second step we install the dependencies and for that we simply specify in the step the command we'd like to run. So here we have the action execute this, the command npm ci. CI stands for clean install. Finally, we log that the job is done. In the same way, we run an echo command. Just says echo job is done. Let's start by testing this out. To do, we commit the workflow file and we push it to the main branch. So we do git add, git commit, git push. Now let's head to the GitHub web page. As you can see, when you head to the repository, there's an actions tab. Our workflow is now triggered in here. Here we can trigger the workflow manually. To do so, we click on the run workflow button in the user interface. When it's finished running, or even while it's still running, we can open up the logs. We can see where the different steps are at and if there are any errors. And thankfully, for the moment, it's all good. The next step is to finish setting up Git in the workflow. To do that, we add another step in the list after the checkout section that we'll call initialize the git user and we'll run a series of commands and for that we'll just put a pipe sign after the run entry and then on the next line we run the command to config configure the git user and the email we want to use. Now we need to configure our access to the npm registry. Normally that requires two-factor authentication which is not going to work within a github action. We need to be able to publish to npm without logging in and for that we need a token. To retrieve this, we need to head to the NPM website. Once we're logged in, we click on access tokens and create a publish token, and then we copy this. Now we're gonna pass this token to the workflow. So let's go back to GitHub. On the repository page, we click on settings and then secrets and then actions. Here we click on new repository secret and we enter NPM underscore token as the secret name, and we paste in the value of the token. Now we need to tell NPM to use the token when talking to the NPM registry. We're gonna be using the NPM config set command, we specify the field we want to set, which is the underscore auth token for the main NPM registry. And we tell it to use the NPM token. Now, there's an additional step. We need to add the secret to the environment of the action. So for that, we should specify that the NPM token should use the value of provided by the secrets. Now, we still have a problem. This command creates a .npmrc file on the container, and that file contains a secret and it will block the release because the git directory will no longer be clean. So let's go and add that file to the .gitignore file. Now let's replace the final log in our step, the final step, with the command to publish the package. And we're going to use the release command and the dash dash ci option, which stands for continuous integration. So it's not going to be asking us any questions within the context of the GitHub action. We also need to provide two tokens to the action from the secret. The first is the GitHub token, and this is provided by default by the action. The second is our NPM token. And now our final workflow looks something like this. Here you can see the general structure with the jobs field that contains one job and the job with a series of steps. And this allows us to run all the steps of our release process with one single clink click in the GitHub interface. And for me, this is part of why code is so fun, because it also allows us to automate the tedious stuff. Release it and GitHub Actions are really powerful for this. Together, they ease a recurring pain point of mine, be it in personal projects or at work. So far, I've only applied it to NPM modules and Next.js websites, although I also use GitHub Actions to automate the update of my profile. But I'm looking forward to also using them to build and release mobile apps and other applications. And of course, you can do lots of fun stuff like sending Slack or Discord notifications, setting up a cron to trigger API calls, and so on. Let me know if you'd like me to explain 
any of these any of this and in the meantime i'll see you in the next video